Sometimes, although very rare, a project gives me the tingles. And this 10th scale Ford RS200 drift build is doing just that. Look at it! Look at it! Would you look at that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, would you look at this? Our goal is to make a driftable but very scale caged RC build with just enough realistic 3D accessories to push all the right buttons to give us those tingles. And what better way to drift away from the JDM than to hit up some fantastic Group B action. Put that 240 down and let's go up skier. Why? 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 Who wouldn't want to have the scale as Shiitake Rally Sport 200 as their tiny nimble drifter? The rally soul of this thing will make you a drifting legend at the track. Results may vary. Oh, and also, here is a message from our sponsor, Sir. Man, we live in interesting times where your surfing data can be actually monetized and sold to the highest bidder. That's why it's crucial to hide your internet fingerprints from exploiting internet algorithms and even nefarious phishing hackers. And that's exactly what Surfshark VPN offers. A digital shield app or browser extension available for all your internet devices. Oh my God. <laughs> Protect your information from exploitation. Oh, maybe I can get it back up. Oh no, oh my God, I can. If you're like me and lots of other renters with landlord provided internet, then you need Surfshark VPN. I use it to protect myself against my shady landlord's open network and also all the other networks that I interact with on the daily. And you should too add Surfshark to all your internet devices and surf freely without any worry wherever you go. You can also travel to any country from the comfort of your own home, unlock geofence content, unlock country specific deals from your slash my favorite camera stores. <laughs> so use my code KPOPRC for your 83% off discount and three months free. Also, Surfshark offers a money back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk to try it out. The link is in the description below. Scale Welcome back to the drift. Scale Drift Project. On this episode, the RS200 gets fleshed out with a cage. We lock into a chassis design redesign battery placement several times and push the firewall around. Hopefully ending this episode with something that looks like we know what we're doing. But first, a massive shout out goes to all the people that invested in this project. Very soon we'll be raffling it off to one of you guys. So come and hang out on Tall Can Tuesday, a live stream that happens every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time for more details and future raffles. The RS200. Here comes the power, there it goes. Oh, wow. My favorite car ever. This is my Fiero Slade. It's the, it's the sexy Italian curves. You know, it's the sexy Italian curves. The aggressive stance, that turbocharged whistle paired with that delightful, ungodly waist gate screech. Unfortunately, its projected future wins never materialized when Group B was scrapped. You know, all those deaths. Just as the last batches of the 200 run rolled off the assembly line, and by, you know, line, I mean hand rolled off the line. Oh, and apparently they didn't end up selling well, you know, which is kind of crappy. It's like you can't even can't even dream about buying one now. Like I mean, it's just uh, out of reach for everybody, unless you're like a you know. You know what I mean? 
You know what I'm saying? We started with the Secura D5 Lite chassis, but like most RC drift chassis, they don't they don't look like, you know, like real race car chassis, you know what I'm saying? Like they don't look like you know, like what we all drool over. You know, what like the the coolest part of a race car is like the naked chassis of all the wickedness that makes it so awesome. Come on. I mean, let's be real. So obviously this RS200 build needs to be as scale inside as out. First thing to do was to recreate the holes of the stock chassis in some kind of painful, torturous 3D software. Because that's how I roll, you know? Learn some obsolete software when, yeah, win torture. Torture. I scanned in the old chassis using a 90s piece of technology called a document scanner. The problem with cheap scanners is they can't guarantee against scale shifts on the axis the scanner head moves. So it's a rough guide. You're gonna have to use some digital calipers to verify points on the real chassis to get, you know, close measurements. You can see how off the scan is on the overlay. If I were smarter, I would have laid down a ruler alongside the chassis and scanned them together for reference. If you need some digital calipers, a tool you should have if you're into RC whatever. I put a link in the description for a cheap set of budget calipers that will, you know, work really well for anything RC related. The goal is to be able to create my own chassis to fine tune and adjust the wheelbase of that chassis while including mounting provisions for structural scale components. Being rear wheel drive and having the power plant attached to the rear bulkhead makes this a fairly easy thing to do. Using some architectural style images from the internets, I started to loosely plan where I needed room for scaleness and where I had no way of avoiding massive spur gears. The chassis had to be split into two parts due to the print bed limitations. The limitation also influenced how I supported the frame rails so they would hold everything together. What I noticed with the Zero Flux Hilux was how rigid the cage made the whole chassis. We could be, you know, using floppy materials like PETG and, you know, for printing and still end up with a very robust, stiff chassis. Even though now, like, the trend is to have really floppy chassis like that, you know, people are like starting to cut away material on the carbon chassis to get, you know, some like horizontal play between the front and the rear bulkheads, I guess to kind of simulate and create more body roll. I'm assuming more body roll. I think that's a thing. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's keep moving. The idea is to get this Secura D5 chassis to look as scale as possible, like the real thing, at least from the same mother. Of course, I scoured the internet looking for reference material. The RS monocoque design uses fairly geometrical shapes to create its tub. It's not a fully tubed race car, which makes it much easier to translate onto the bloated, widened Secura chassis. The RS is a four-cylinder mid-engined turbo rocket ship. The firewall is basically an aluminium, because it's British, sheet lofting the main hoop. The main concern is the RC motor and drive line and where they sit in relation to the driver and the passenger. Bah! You know, it's iterative design, right? So we're just gonna make it a hundred times and then keep printing it until we get it right, which is probably not the way to do things efficiently, but, um, I don't know. I mean, whatever. Yeah, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. 
there are a few versions that I won't bore you with. Let's get onto like more notable versions with larger steps and progressions in design. The first version tucks the battery behind the driver, standing it up on its side. It's actually a great placement where you can, you know, use the posts, the battery leads as a way to hold the battery in place. Exactly like the Zero Flux Hilux. Yeah. This version also added mounting for the seats and locations for the main hoop to friction fit into the side rails. Everything was gravy. Hours of measuring and printing and we got ourselves this first version. But guess what? That damn spur gear. Oh, man, I put the battery, I occupied the battery in the same space as the spur gear. It's like two steps forward, you know, 10 steps back, you know, so let's just freaking start over. Let's start over. Version two. Version two is a massive step forward. Fixed wheelbase issues. The cage got designed and so did a sweet lip. I went all Pike's Peak with that front diffuser, but I think it looks super rad on the RS200. There have been a, a few Pike's Peak RS200s in the past with crazy aero, and yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. My God, it's looking really good. If you think it looks good, man, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification bell. And, uh, and yeah, for more builds and also more giveaways. I tried to even, you know, make it painless to print by, you know, creating smaller cage sections that can be printed low to the print bed and reduce massive amounts of support material. Support material is when we have overhangs in our 3D prints and we need to like bridge the gaps. That's done with support structures. This FDM printing thing is freaking wild. Uh, it just keeps, you know, it just keeps getting better and better. Same hardware, modified software, firmware upgrades and slicer updates, that's it. It's the best, man. You know, if you're not into it, get into it. If you're into RC, you should probably also be getting into 3D printing. It's only gonna get better. The materials are only gonna get better and the printers are only gonna get better. So it's a good time to jump in so you have like a you know, good understanding of how it works and you can kind of follow along as things get wild, wilder. Wilder? Wilder. Things get wilder. Jeez. It's the best. Right! Right, the battery issues. The battery issues. I flipped the battery flat and wedged it behind the seats, adding seat rails to slide the seats forward out of the way if needed. I'm trying to think about like battery leads, access to battery leads. Think in the head. The battery slides in via a latch. I originally designed to have a magnet. It enters from one side and it can't rattle out. I don't know if it worked well because unfortunately this version is riddled with some other issues that require a full redesign. Version number three and my current version. Why did we need to do a version three? Well, if you look at the RS200, you can see the main hoop for the roll cage and the firewall divide the two side windows of the body. With version two, the hoop was way too far back, mainly just to accommodate for battery placement. After some massive brainstorming, I just decided to create a pass-through for the battery. It's a tunnel pass-through that attaches the roll cage hoop in, in the right spot. 
I also added slots so the firewall and the horizontal chassis sections could fit together for an even tighter fit for more rigidity. And here it is, version three in all its glory. I think it's probably one of the best builds I have ever, ever done. I mean, it's not even done yet and it seems like it is the culmination of everything I've learned in the past scale as shit builds. I also sent out the chassis to a company called Sen Cut Sen to have it cut out of aluminum. I didn't get it cut out of carbon fiber because it was cost prohibitive. It was way too much freaking money. So aluminum it is, and the aluminum does really look freaking dope, so. On the next episode, we're gonna start adding some super scale resin accents, period correct wheels, dashboard and engine accessories, including intercooler and turbo. The paint will get discussed and maybe we'll throw in some hobby wing power plant action to see how she drifts. Mm. Thanks for watching and uh, you know if you've made it this far you may as well subscribe may as well hit that notification bell thumbs up the video leave a comment man and uh, come and hang out on tall can Tuesday that's Tuesdays at 9 30 p.m. Eastern time come hang out live on YouTube where we just discuss cool stuff and hashtag scale is shit on Instagram so if you got a cool build and you want to check it out on tall can Tuesday don't forget to use the hashtag scale is shit but uh, man, all right, dudes, cheers to beers, and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, K-pop out. <laughs>